Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So last week there was a lot of response to that idea of finding your style. And so we'll have to talk about that some more as well as the idea of passion, about our voice, which is different than our style, and authenticity. Because they're all important. I mean, they're all sort of what is calling us. To, you know, what is our calling? And giving, you know, a very courageous and personal expression to that. It's kind of the foundation of why we're doing the whole thing in the first place. But it is all built on the foundation of skills. You know, we need to practice the skills so that that voice has a channel. Uh, over the holidays, I got a chance to do some painting and I did a couple of larger paintings. And I just wanted to show you this week some of the thinking that goes on in my mind, at least, before beginning a larger painting. It's 30 by 36 and I don't just pick up a brush and start and see what happens. I do a fair amount of thinking beforehand before beginning. So I'm going to share that thinking process with you this week my way and um, I think you'll find it useful to sort of see because what I am doing something this week where I'm actually taking the perspective of the world and kind of cranking it like this and you'll uh, you know I'll explain it when I show you the images but I think you'll find it interesting and just interesting to see the thinking process, the process that goes on before the painting. Okay, so here's the image I worked on this week. This is Monk's Cove in Cape Cod. I taught there a plein air workshop a few years ago and a friend of mine, Gary Beck, sent me this photograph and I decided to use it. I mean, I'd been there and painted it. Um, but here's the thing, if you look at the image, you can't see the water, particularly after the island on the right-hand side. Because we're at eye level, we are seeing everything as sort of flat, stacked one thing behind the other. And I wanted to get more of a sense of the landscape kind of curving up so that I could see the water masses towards the back because that's what interested me. So I did a quick sketch. This is like on an eight and a half an 11 sheet of paper, just trying to figure out what I was trying to do. And then I did it larger, about 12 inches wide, really sort of trying to figure out, okay, what are the shapes? So I redrew it and, you know, I like to draw, so it's not like this is tedious to me, but from the square, you can see I drew it here and then I extended it out there because I felt I needed more room on the right hand side. But here's the thing that I want to show about this in particular. If you think of the island here, it's kind of like an axis that all these different things are now circling around because we can see them, right? We can see the land back here and the water and so on. We're seeing all these different things now and we're getting this motion like that. And I want to show you a couple of paintings by Nicolas Pousset who was doing the same thing back in the 1600s. Now this was painted in 1650. And you can see that he's got this lake here and he's got a story here of a guy looking at somebody being eaten by a snake and someone responding there. But there's all these things going all the way around the lake. And you'd say, oh, I see the compositional structure there. So we just looked at his painting as if this was the center axis and everything was going around the lake. When in fact, it's more like this. He's got a castle sort of up here that is the center. And then everything is in a big circle like this, but the painting is cut off here. So it's a very interesting and dramatic use of the space that he's got in the picture plane. You see here is actually the thing everything is centered around. And there, all these things way in the background there, coming around here, way out there, and then back in there. And just so you don't think it was like an isolated thing, he did a number of paintings like this. The axis is here, and all this stuff way back there, coming way forward into this, and way out and around, and back over there. And there's the finished drawing. I mean, it's about 12 inches wide, and I just really liked working with the different sort of sense of seeing the landscape like this 
all around the access there. I wasn't doing exactly what Poussin was doing, but that was sort of, it, it sort of occurred to me after the fact, not like, oh, I'm going to do it like Poussin. So I hope that's helpful, seeing sort of my thinking behind the scenes of like what you might consider before just putting brush to canvas. And next week I'll show you the block in and then various developments and the finished painting. And I, I thought it turned out pretty well, actually. I kind of like it. So I hope you have a terrific week this week and you have opportunities for creative expression and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.